Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics. This is the week three bonus content. Like in the other two weeks, I like to round out each week with some extra things that you can do if you wanna spend some time in these projects. Again, these are always voluntary, but it's an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about Unreal Engine and put some extra time into your projects. The first thing I wanted to cover is setting nighttime during runtime. Now, in our game, we're setting this dark ambiance during play, but when you're trying to edit the level, it's really hard because you can't really see. Now, one option is just to go to unlit and do some editing that way, but sometimes it's also really hard to see when you're doing it like this. So let's start by figuring out how we want it to look during runtime. And here I have my directional light set to zero, minus one, and 180 for world rotation. Let's open up our level blueprint. After we're setting our ambient sound, I'm calling a new event that I'm calling set night. And in set night, I'm taking the directional light and setting the world rotation to match those values. Now, when we're editing, we can set this to a value that allows us to see a little bit more clearly, but then when we press play, it's gonna set it back to nighttime. The next thing I want to cover is the foliage tools. So you may have asked yourself, how did I get so many trees and various assets into my level? Well, I was using the foliage tools for this. Instead of having to take and place each actor independently, we can go here to mode and then foliage. And we have a new tool set that we can use for this. Now to set this up, it's really simple we want to find the foliage that we want. So for instance, I have this asset pack that has a lot of various trees that I could choose from. Find a foliage actor that you like and drag it over here to where it says foliage type. And you know, you'll see that there are various foliage types that I could choose from. If you select one, it'll show you what that foliage type is and then you can set the density down here. I like to set things like trees to one and grass to a little bit higher value. So now I have five different trees and three different types of grass that are gonna be painted when I use these tools. Here, you can set the brush size and paint density so we can make it more dense or less dense without having to change these values independently. So if you wanted to have very dense forest that thins out towards the edges, you could start with a level like one and then go down to 0.1 or 0.2 for the edges. And then brush size, we'll just change the size that we're painting. And we see this little dome here. Let's go to an area of our map that doesn't have anything. And now I'm at a blank area of my map just so I could test this out. And I'll start by setting the paint density to 0.1. And you can see it's just painting on all of my various foliage types. And just to show the difference, let's set this to one. And we can see it's much more dense. There are also some other tools up here where we can place a single actor, we can fill the whole thing, and then also a race. So if we wanted to create like a little path through this tree line, we can make a smaller brush. And then with the erase, we can just drag a little path and we'll erase everything along that line. And now we have a nice cleared path here. So I definitely recommend taking some time to experiment with the foliage tool. It's great for filling in large landscapes like this very quickly. So the next thing I wanna show you is a really cool tool that you can use to create landscapes very quickly if you don't wanna spend the time manually sculpting them. We can import a landscape height map. And there are a lot of tools out there to generate height maps. I just like to use this one, it's free. It's called Tangrams. I will put a link in the description, but it shows you the map of the world. And we can zoom in to an area of this map. And here I have a nice little area. It looks like there's some hills and rivers. You can adjust this render multiplier to get a much more detailed render. I'll just put it to four, which seems to be halfway in the middle and click render. It's gonna let me know the size of my texture file. I'll click OK. And then we'll notice that it creates a download file for us. Here in Unreal Engine, I started a new level. I'm gonna to go to my landscape mode and add a new landscape. 
And here I can do import from file and import that render file. And if you notice, it's going to create a landscape map for me now. I'll select import. And now I have this nice rocky terrain auto created for me. And you'll notice it's got a little bit of a jaggedness to it. You can change this by updating the resolution. Or once we have it in here, we can just go around and smooth out this jagginess with the smooth brush. And this might take some time, but arguably it's much faster than trying to create this entire terrain by yourself. The next thing I wanted to show you is just really quickly how to create some footstep sounds so that as we're moving around, we get a little bit of audio feedback. So I have a footstep sound that I found online and I imported it into my project. And we want to play this whenever the foot hits the ground. And we can do this by using something called an animation notify. Here in our walk animation, we can drag until we find the point where the foot would interact with the ground. And then if you right click here in this graph, you'll see add notify, new notify. Let's call this footstep. And we can find where the next time it interacts, which is here, and we'll add that same footstep. Now in our animation blueprint, if we right click and type footstep, you'll see event anim notify footstep. And then we can just play sound. Find our footstep. And now when we're walking around, we'll hear footsteps. I'm gonna make that a little bit quieter. Seems very loud. And the last quick tip I wanted to show you is just a few things to check if you're going from Blender to Unreal Engine. If you're not interested in seeing this, you could definitely skip the rest of this video. Now the process for creating an export is to go to File, Export, FBX. And you'll find the place you want to send it to. And then there's some settings over here. Just a few things that I like to do before I export something. The first thing is make sure I have what I want to export or the collection I want to have exported and then choose only active collection or selected objects. So in this case, I just want the chair. So I'll do selected object. This means you don't have to go through and hide everything that you don't want to be exported. It saves you a little bit of time. The next thing we want to do is make sure we set our transform to Y minus forward and Z up. This will ensure that the transform of our blend file is translated into Unreal Engine. Now, if you don't have any animations or anything, you can just unselect bake animation and then name your file, whatever you want. So we could call this chair and then we hit export. But there are a few common mistakes that I notice when people are exporting things from Blender into Unreal Engine or another game engine. The first thing is not setting the origin of your objects correctly. If you notice, my chair here has the origin set to zero. This affects the way that this thing will rotate in Unreal Engine. So it'll rotate in the way that I want it to, and it will also scale the way that I want it to. The next mistake I notice is that people don't check the normals. So this chair here looks good, but if I go here to face orientation, you'll notice that I have all red. And when we're looking at face orientation, we don't want red usually. Red means this is the inside. If I scroll inside, you'll notice that everything's blue, which means if I were to export this from Blender to Unreal Engine, this model would be inside out. To fix this, we can go into edit mode, hit A for all, and then Alt N will give us this normals, and we can select flip, and now my model is facing the correct direction. The last thing I wanted to go over is just making sure that you check your UVs before you export. So I did a lot of extruding on this, and that means if I send it to Unreal Engine, all the textures are gonna be off. So one thing you wanna do very quickly is go into edit mode, hit A for all, and then U for unwrap. And you can either use the unwrap or smart UV project. 
is the one I usually use. Make a little bit of an island and select OK. And now if we go to our UV editing, we notice that it's unwrapped in a way that makes sense for our game. So for you to use one of the pre-made textures that we have, for instance, the wood, this model, we could just drag it on there and it would look good. And I'm gonna export this quickly into my project. So selected objects, Y forward, Z up, unselect bake animation, it's gonna be chair FBX and F export. Back in Unreal Engine, I'll right click, import, and I do not want to create a new material. Import all. And here I have my chair. And I could set it to the redwood. And it doesn't look terrible. And now we've got a couple chairs. So it just makes this a little bit more interesting. So if you wanted to create some assets in Blender to fill out your houses, or if you can find an asset pack with some furniture that fits the ambiance, I definitely challenge you to do that as well. And this rounds out the bonus content for week three. So I'll see you in week four.